In this video, we'll continue on with the point of sale system in JavaScript, and this is part 22. So what we're going to do now is basically here, we have done a few items. So for example, we selected all of this, and this is also nicely working. You click on this, and then we say insert paint amount, and customer paid exact amount, and if we confirm this, here we have, this is now being disabled, and this has been enabled. However, this here is still enabled. And what we want to do now is we want to disable all of this so that we cannot click this away we can click this away or clear it in any way at all and secondly we also don't want to be able to go back here to select something makes all sense because once the customer paid they should not be uh, updating their item the only thing what you might be able to do is if the customer says oh i forgot to order something and they already paid they will basically create a new customer. You say new customer, and then maybe they will order then the specific item. Let's say the water they forgot to order, and they will only order that, and they get a separate receipt for that. That makes all sense. So, to do this, then what we need to do then is we need to figure out how can we, if we do this here in checkout here, how can we make sure that all of these options, including this here, is disabled? As you can see here, that this will be all disabled. So let's start to work on that. To do this, we need to go down here and go in the function. We need to create a separate function. We have already a function here for paid amount and this enabled. So let's create another function that will say if we click on that same button there and when the customer confirm payment, this enables, but at the same time, all these buttons here should be disabled, including this here. So let's scroll down or at least let's go down here where we were. Uh, let's search for that one. What is the name of that? All right, that's the one. Enable next customer and print button. So this is the function. So what we're going to do here, I'm just going to create a new function and now I'll just give this a very simple name. Should be maybe a better name, but this is just uh, the best what I can figure out for now. So I'll just say you disable all buttons. And what I refer to here is basically all the buttons that will, that will allow a a order or that will basically add anything on here so we want to disable all of that so we don't have that issue so we say here is function enable this all right then in here what are we going to do well the first one will be very easy the first one what i want to disable is these two here and if i open up my developer tab here and let's select this item you can see here you probably will find somewhere the id this is the id the pills food tab i uh, button all right so this is a very straightforward one so we say here document dot get element by id this and then we say here dot disable equals true so once we did that we can do another one for the drinks if i'm not mistaken it, called, it is should be named drinks am i correct pills drink a target that's a target sorry the id pills drink if I'm not mistaken, it should be tab. And if I hover over, you can see here the tooltip. Pay attention to the tooltip. You'll probably see the ID as well. You can see here, hashtag means ID. Two, well, a pills, drink, tab. That, and then that is the ID. And then dot nav. Nav is the class. So if I just copy all of this. I just copy the entire text here. Let's see what is that. All right. So it grabs everything here as well. I guess it's just very consistent naming as the upper one. Except instead of food, it is drink. So I can say here, drink. There we are. So now we did this one. Next one, what I want to solve is, if I clear up here, this one here. And I click on this. Let's see here. Here we have an issue here, is that we didn't give this a, a specific ID name. In this case, an ID name can be uh, probably the most sensible thing to do. Or if we can figure out a unique class that we can pinpoint on. And we don't have a unique class here. So what I want to do here is I want to go and search for this one. And it's related to the class of on click order basket clear. So I'm going to, to look for this button and give this a specific ID name. So I'm going to say here control F to search. Search for this on click clear. All right, this is the button. So I say here ID the well, we can just say this um, order basket clear I button. I'll just call the button. All right, copy that. Go down, and then we can just move this one here. And then we have to go all down, I think, all to the back, the bottom. Here we are. No, sorry, that's not it. Disable all buttons. All right. So then we have this one here. Grab this, 
put it in there, cut this out, place that in the ID here. If I save this now, refresh, I click on these, check out, pay amount, confirm. All right, let's click on confirm. You can see you now this has been grayed out. If I click here, you can see this also. Well, you can see we have this Hoover effect here. Maybe we can disable that as well, but it doesn't matter for now. But it doesn't allow any more to go in here. Of course, we still have this issue here, so it's time to solve this one. But how do we solve this? Because this one is slightly more tricky. And the reason why it's tricky is because, look, we have many buttons here. We cannot give this an ID because an ID is unique, meaning that there's only one of it. So what can we do then here? So for this, I have a nice trick. And for that trick to work, what we need here is to look for the specific item here. So what I'm going to do is the following. I want to say here, I'm looking for, uh, well, in this case, the ID of the unordered list. All right, right unordered list. That is the container that consists of all of these items. And I guess this doesn't work, but basically, it, here this is the order list item but it's the unordered list so here we have the li what i will do is the following i will say th this i want to search in this specific unordered list with the id name of order list the ul with the id name of order list then within here search for every tag with a button so within here so it will what will happen is we'll look through all of these items here and we'll recognize and register every button we have and from there on, we can just say disable all these buttons. So we're going to use that trick. So let's start to play around with that because this is a very useful trick for now. So what we're going to say here, let's get the ID name, which is the ID here. Then I say here, document get element by ID. All right. First of all, we need to indicate this specific order list, which is this one, the UL item for a specific ID then. And then here, what we want to do now is the following. We're going to use here then dot query selector all. And this basically means, or query means search, search for a selector. And then we're not searching for one selector, but all the selectors with the same specific value. And the value in this case will be button. Because we are searching for all the buttons. If we do this, You'll see here now, and let's do here constant. I'll just make this a constant. Constant and just call this all buttons. Uh, I guess all buttons like that, something like that, doesn't matter. All right. Now here, if I do here console.log, you'll see now, if I save this, we will grab every button the moment we, we press on confirm. So let's see here. So in total, we will have one, two, three, six buttons. All right, it makes sense. So if you have this here, Still six buttons, but if we have like that, we have here in total of eight buttons now. Let's click on checkout. Click the amount paid. All right, confirm. All right, so everything else has been disabled. Open up the developer tab here. And if I scroll down, you can see here we have a note list, and the note list is indicating uh, how many buttons do we have here. Uh, eight buttons. This is 12 buttons, as you can see here. This is correct. Three, four times three. That's basically here. So it, recognize every button with all the information we have here. For us, this is not really important. The only thing what is important here is the disabled. I guess you can see here if it's disabled, yes or no. Let's search for the D, letter D, letter D. Disabled, false, all right? So now all of them are not yet set on disabled. So what I'm going to do now is just basically here, we just grab this disable, and I'm going to set this on true. But to do this, remember we have here basically this is what we call the note information, all the notes. So if you're very familiar with what we did here, where we create elements and then add and insert the create text notes, this is basically the note as well. So it's very similar to an array, but it's not an array. It's basically a note list because it's all the elements. But we can consider it like an array. Why? Because we have to do the same methodology for that. If we want to loop through these, we need to do it like an array. So we're going to say here the following. We say here four, and then I'll say here let i equals zero and then what we're going to do we're going to look through every button here and then we say here uh we want to iterate and iterate stands for repeating yourself uh, x number of times or basically a loop iteration and loop so here why uh so we want to keep on looping this as long as buttons dot length so this will measure how many buttons we have or analyze you can see here the length equals 12 
which is correct three times of all of these here. So what we're going to do then is yes, a semicolon is I++ for iteration, or increase it, or incremental increase of value. And then here we say the following, all buttons, and then we just treat this like an array. I, so I would be, this one here, the first one would be I1, or I0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever the order is here. However, that's basically how it is. And then we say here dot, this table. Make sure you spell it correctly, equals true. So once we did this, we can save this here. And uh, we can do a semicolon here, it doesn't make it matter anymore, I guess, these days. Refresh. Now let's test this again. Check out. Insert paid amount. We paid this. Confirm. All right, there you are. You can see now it has grayed out, or you can see it's tr uh, slightly more transparent, meaning that the button is now not clickable. And if I try to click on it, there you are. I cannot do anything at all. I can still click on this checkout here. Maybe we can dis uh, disable this one as well. It has no real meaning because those two should be now the only one. So maybe just for the last one here, let's get this checkout button here, which is an ID, which is a very straightforward process. Copy that. And then we say here, I'll just do it here above. Say document, document dot get element by ID. Checkout button dot disable. And then we say here equals true. There we are. Save this. Refresh. Click, click, click. Check out. Pay. Let's pay $100 today. All right. There we are. So we get this. Oh, I can see here we have to figure out this one later on. But that's all right. That will be the next video. And that's it here. So this is basically how we can do this. And uh, that's all for now. Next video, I will definitely figure out this one. This is a very simple quick fix. However, then we need to wor work on these two items here. We need to figure out how we are going to do the print button. And then after we need to figure out how we're going to do the next customer. When we click next customer, uh, we need to reset everything. I guess that will be the easiest one to do next first. And after we're going to work on the print receipt button. For uh, Well, that will be afterwards.